Ladies and gentlemen, I hope in these strange times you feel yourself personally okay and also your relatives. My name is Saskia van Uflen. I am a corporate VP for an IT company, Initum, and I'm also a digital champion for Belgium. Now, the reason why I'm digital champion for Belgium is that I'm very passionate about how can we create a society, how can we create an economy which will create a good platform for our children and grandchildren. This is a little bit my personal way of taking my social responsibility. I'm representing the federal Belgian government for the European Commission, but I try to focus on a few aspects which are uh, important in this society. For example, e-inclusion. How can we integrate vulnerable people? How can we integrate elderly people? How can we back, go back to a harmony between welfare and well-being? Because let's be honest, we have been focusing the last months and the last years a lot on having higher revenue, higher net sales, you need to decrease the costs because you need to make the profitability on the short term. And we are feeling all together now a way on saying, now guys, we need to stop it a little bit. How can we find not a balance because a balance for an engineer is mostly 50-50, but how can we find a harmony again between welfare and well-being? And when I'm talking about these subjects, uh, sometimes I get into a meeting and then people start pointing to others. It's the role of the government, it's the role of my boss, my customer is not easy. But you have to realize that if you point out to somebody else, three fingers are pointing to yourself. And what I try to do is take a personal commitment, take my passion a step further and try to inspire people to dare to change and dare to take the opportunity that this can create for tomorrow. The new book that I've created, uh, written, is um, printed in February, and the title is There for Tomorrow. Now, seeing the context, I would maybe have uh, better called it There for Today, but the content is even more rel relevant now. We are pulling on an elastic. We are pulling on an elastic on the economy. We are pulling on an elastic for ourselves. You, you, but you realize at a certain moment, if you pull an elastic in front of your nose, the elastic breaks, it goes flat in your face, and the light goes out. And then I hear a lot of people saying, yeah, Saskia, you know, you're right, but you, this quarter it will still work, and I only have two years to go. So for me, for my bonus, for the elections, for myself, it's still okay. It's for the problem for the next generation. And that's what I try to avoid. We need people who dare today. And if you look to the expression saying you have to buy an umbrella when the sun is shining, this explains why some organizations are doing pretty okay in these times. Because that are the organizations that have bought their umbrella, that have started to make the change much more earlier in a cycle. And they're more agile, they're more flexible to adapt to the challenges, circumstances where we're working in today. And obviously, I'm also working in the, in the technology sector. Technology has an impact on what is happening now. In my book, I have written, um, let's hope we do not have to have a war to wake up people, to motivate them to change. Well, we are in a kind of a war. But lucky that we still have the buildings, we still have the streets, we still have technology. And technology makes, for example, this kind of presentations possible. But the fact that everybody and everything is connected, we need to realize that it has also some consequences. And one of an important consequence is that it's, it's a little bit, the world is upside down. When I started in my career, I made a business plan and I decided what the customer would buy three years from now. I would have said he will buy a green chair with four legs and he, would, he will be capable of going to a retail shop. But today, as the customer is in the driver's seat, the customer says, no, I want a white chair with three legs, green dots, and I would like to have delivered it at my home tomorrow. And it's are the customers who are very flexible to adapt to that changing customer requirement who are the companies who will win. So if you talk about customer centricity, it is much more than just a CRM application. It is how can I adapt my services offer in order to answer to 
the change, the constant changing customer requirements. But if we talk about customers, we also need to recognize that for a sector organization, and Belgium is a country where we love to put companies in boxes. We have the transport sector, we have the finance sector, we have the logistics sector, we have the health sector. Well, guess what? Because of the fact that everybody is connected, the competition will not come out of the sector anymore. It's a little bit what we called a while ago, the uberification. And then suddenly somebody will pop up with a great innovative idea. It's a very small entity. It's maybe a starter, but they will annoy the existing um, uh, organizations. So that's important to look also outside of your box. Don't be a specialist in only what you know. Go further in looking on how is life going on in other sectors. And if you talk about connection, then obviously you, you talk about data. And data is indeed the gold of today and the gold of tomorrow. And yes, we have a risk on cyber attacks where we have to find solutions on. But there is one element that I would like to have the support of each of you online. We need to treat the data in an ethical way. And that is not the responsibility of the chief digital officer or the chief data officer. That is the responsibility of each and every one of us and each of every one of our customers. Look to the behavior of some adults who are talking on social media, then let's not surprise, be surprised that children are copying our behavior. So ethical way of handling data is critical going forward. But it's not only technology who drives the changes. We also have some other limits in our organizations. We have a financial limit. I cannot constantly do more revenue with less costs. The financial model is at the end. We need to find new financial models. We also need to have people who have innovative ideas on what could be a new financial model responding to the constant changes of the requirements of our customers. And I know that a lot of you are connected in an IT sector like I am, but let's make a big difference between automation and disruption. Automation is using technology to automate a process of yesterday. And yes, we have to do it because on a short term, we need to work on the efficiency. And like the expression says, every process that can be automated will be automated. And there is nothing wrong about that because that will help us to survive in a crisis mode and certainly like we do today. But at the same time, we need to think on disruptive ideas. Remember, competition is not going to come out of the sector. Remember that the customer is in the driver's seat. So what will be my new business going forward? And if you talk about new business, then you also have to think about how am I going to handle that new business, knowing that we have different generations, different generations in our own organizations, but also different generations at the customer side. If you are, for example, uh, in a retail sector, and I see it in, in my family myself, the buying behavior of my children is completely different going forward than what is my buying behavior. So we need to go from a way of working where we can integrate also the views of those, those different generations. It means that it has an impact on leadership because they, they do not work in a controlling mode based on, on seniority, like I've done my whole career. They would like to have flat career paths. And that is also the aspect of, of not worth focusing on diversity only, but how can I create a culture in my organization who is inclusive? And that's why working to the sustainability goals is that important. So we need urgently to dare to work on a transition. We need to dare to think long-term, not only this month, not only this quarter, and that is as important for board members because they are responsible to discuss the long-term strategy of an organization. But that is also important for the people managers in organizations because they have to learn to manage people on a distance. And that's not, that's not easy for them because they've been hired for a controlling function. They are being hired to control spreadsheets and PowerPoints, and now suddenly they have to be hired to trust people. That's not the same competence. So be as a CEO from your own life, you also need to make an analysis 
what are my major competencies? And going forward, what are eventually additional competencies that I have to learn? So lifelong learning is something which is not just a slogan which is important. Lifelong learning is a slogan which is important for each individual, but also for an organization. It's not good enough to think on short term and say, I will look outside in the organization and I will go for the talent outside. No, I would recommend look to already what you have in your human capital inside the organization and there to invest in their potentials. How do I do it? Is always the question I get. Because Saskia, you have to know, my boss doesn't understand. My shareholder doesn't understand. How do I have to start knowing that the house is on fire for the moment? So let me end up with a recommendation where you can find all details in my book there for tomorrow if you want. Seven steps which I would recommend. First, we have to realize that this is not going to be happening in the quarter. The change of the culture in an organization to be ready for tomorrow will take between three to five years. So it's not enough to hire a project manager to ask to make the survey and then implement a tool. This goes much beyond IT and technology. The second step is you have to define your starting point. And that's something which I did often very wrong in the past because I took as a starting point the last, the last financial results or the annual reports or what my management told me. And I do realize that now that my management most of the time tells me what I would love to hear because they're scared to sometimes tell the reality. So making the cartography is a little bit like if you buy an old house, you see it and the first time everything seems easy. And you buy the house and then you start discovering that the electricity is maybe not top and that there is some, some problem with the water and the roof was mm, maybe also uh, lacking some maintenance. So you have to really start looking to all details and ask the floor of your organization, help them to dare to express their feelings. And if you do not get the answer, then say to them, if you would be CEO, if you would be people manager, or if it concerns yourself, ask your partners, ask your family, if you would be me, what would you recommend? What would you do? And you would you be surprised what kind of an input you get. The third step is you need to put your flag. You need to define for yourself, where do I want to go far from here? And why do I say far from here? Because if you put your flag too short, then a lot of excuses pop up. Take, the take for example, the example of the education. We could never do hybrid education. We could never do blended education because the teachers didn't want, the buildings were not okay, the technology was not there, the students didn't want, and suddenly it works. And yes, it needs some improvement. So put your flag far enough and dare to dream. Dare to dream. If you aim for the moon, you will shoot, shoot on the stars um, going forward. Step four is communication. And these days, people, please do not limit the budgets on communication. It is at these moments that people really need to be inspired, really need to know where you were going to. So you need to increase your budget on communication at the moment we're living now. And it's only step five that you can start to work on your action plan. So the four steps do take your time to invest it. Because if you do not have the right starting point, if you do not communicate about your flag, then you will only be alone in your organization or only be alone in your team and you will not have the support behind you. To define the action plan, be innovative. Think out of the box and think very well on automation and disruption. And for the execution of the action plan, which is step six, don't start doing it yourself if you are a manager. Look for champions in the organization. Look for youngsters who will live in the world of tomorrow. Look for different competences. Look for diversity. Look for innovation, which you already have in the house, and make them responsible as CEO of that idea. And step back. And then is the last step, which was for me personally very difficult. You have to be patient. Because being an entrepreneur, you realize that making errors is a good thing because out of errors, you can learn. So dare to make errors, but also 
for yourself, for your organization, for our children and grandchildren. I hope you will also there for tomorrow. I wish you all good luck.